All coming up. We've got baseball. We've got lacrosse. But we're going to start things off with women's basketball because I'm sure over the weekend you heard the enormous news that happened to come out of the state of New Jersey. Over the weekend, it became official. After more than a thousand wins, Rutgers C. Vivian Stringer is stepping down as the head coach of the Scarlet Knights basketball program. She's been at Rutgers since 1995, spent a dozen years at Iowa before that. And with that in mind, it brings us to today's big interview. And that is Kalia Copper, last year's WNBA Finals MVP. Good enough to join us. You played for C. Viv at Rutgers from 2012 to 2016. When you heard the news she was stepping down, how'd you react? Uh, I was actually really happy for Coach Stringer. Um, I think it's time that she she's able to, to, to settle down and really enjoy her life. I think um, when you play her, you know she thinks, sleep, um, and, and live basketball. So I'm just excited for her to really just get her flowers from um, everybody now and also for her to just um, to truly enjoy her life. I don't know. You think 50 years coaching was enough? That seems on the short end. You know, let's have her stretch it out a little bit. She could have done 75, right? <laughs> what made her good X and O's wise as a coach? Coach Stringer was just always playing chess. Uh, I think that um, between games or even with us, how she could motivate us, how she knew she could get through to, to us. And I think that um, just the way she was able to motivate and the way that she was able to get through to her players for me was just how genius it was for how, her. How'd she do it? What, was she, what are the ways she would motivate you? You know, with me, sometimes she would just pick on me like, you, you can't do that, knowing how I respond to, to that. And, you know, as a leader, some players don't respond well to that. So for, for some other players, maybe she's, like, just giving them um, the confidence. But for me, uh, I think that she would just challenge me. I just think that she knows, as a leader, how to motivate each and every single player. So for me, it was always just trying to get under my skin a little bit and just teaching me that, you know, nothing's ever given to you and you have to work for everything that you think that you deserve. What was she like in practice? <laughs> Coach was always intense, you know. Um, I'm just having flashbacks now that you talked about practice is, you know, I would sometimes be getting ready for practice, um, shooting around, and as soon as Coach walks in the gym from the back, if she see me shooting, as soon as she walks in, she's like, no, you need to hold your follow-through up. No, you need to use your legs more. And I'm like, sheesh. Like, she just walked in the gym, but... I just think she was always just so locked in and she just um, really just loved the, loved the game and always wanted to teach us and never wanted us to um, settle for anything less. Was she intimidating? Yeah, it, it's funny because the coach is, uh, you know, small, short, uh, older lady, um, <laughs> but coach was so, so intense, you know, uh, reminding me of like my mom, just like a mother figure, just really getting on me. So I think that if you, if you really know Coach Stringer, you know, she's intimidating. What about mid game in a huddle? What was her intensity like? Okay. If you see the two fingers from Coach Stringer, then you know, you know, it's, it's, it's trouble. So I think that we, we've gotten a few, a few of those points from Coach Stringer, but Mid game, uh, she is a, the ultimate competitor. Um, I think she teaches you um, how to have that pride and um, just how to, to compete and really take um, nothing for granted. G give me an example. Show me the two fingers. Let's say she's trying to address you <coughs> mid game. You got like five minutes left in the fourth quarter. Show me and, and talk to me in the way she would. You know what? She might just give me the look like. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, I got, Coach, I got it. I got it. I, I got you, Coach. <laughs> what was her <laughs> personality like away from the court? Outside of the court, you know, Coach Stringer, we, we would have shoot-around. Um, and it would be a very intense shoot-around. And, you know, after shoot-around, she probably was getting on me all practice. And then the minute that it's over and we're going to have um, a team, team um, dinner or lunch before the game, you know, She's just like, you okay? Like, make sure you're eating. Make sure you're getting, and make sure you're getting rest. And I'm like, you was just yelling at me, like, <laughs> two seconds ago. Like, like we would literally walk out of shoot around. She's like, 
you need a ride? Like, come on, you can ride with me. We, I'm riding to the, we used to eat at the Hyatt. And she's like, come on, take, take a ride with me. And I'm like, no, coach, I don't want to ride with you right now after shoot around. <laughs> like, but I think that that's just, you know, that's just how it goes. You know, I knew at the end of the day that she had my, my best intentions um, and that she just only wanted for me to not only be a better player, but to ultimately be a better person. I mean, you used this word earlier, but it really does sound motherly, the way you had a relationship with her. Yeah, I think that um, Coach Stringer, I think everybody is giving her so much credit. You know, we talk so much about you know, the thousand plus wins and just um, all of her accomplishments on the court. But off the court, I think, you know, she really poured into us. You know, we, we don't talk too much about the players that she has that are doctors, that are lawyers, that are uh, entrepreneurs. And, you know, I think that the, the small lessons that Coach Stringer was teaching us um, is so much deeper than basketball and it's so much deeper than wins and losses and um, her WNBA players. It, it also goes back to those, those doctors and those lawyers and those other players that she has groomed. I can't imagine the amount of stories she must have had to be able to tell. I mean, she was inducted into the Hall of Fame with Michael Jordan. She won an Olympic gold medal in 04. Like, give me an example of a story about her life that you remember her telling you. Uh, Coach Schenger was full of stories, but I think one of my, one of, uh, what's one of my favorite stories? It's funny that you put me on the spot and then I did, can't think well, of a favorite well, story. She, I'm fascinated <laughs> by the Hall of Fame. Did, did she tell you anything about that? I mean, the whole class was unbelievable. She's there next to the greatest to ever play. What did she tell yeah. you about that? I mean, she just really talked about Michael, like talked about Michael Jordan and just about how competitive he was. Um, talked about his competitiveness and how he just continued to get better. Um, you know, how hard he went in practice and how good of a leader he was. And I think that for her teaching us that leadership and telling us about, you know, competing even in practice, you know, you know, sometimes we come to practice and we're, we're friendly with each other, but it's like, it's no, like we're, we're getting after and we're all competing because we're all want to get better. So I think that more of talking about the competitiveness of Michael Jordan and um, just the stories that they shared. I can only imagine if you're being recruited by her and she's telling you, oh yeah, a couple years ago, I was in the Hall of Fame with Jordan. Like, what was it like being recruited by her? I have a really funny story about being um, <laughs> recruited by Coach Stringer. Um, on my visit, actually, uh, she was just like, completely humbled me. And it was something that I needed. You know, when we're coming out of college as getting recruited by um, high D division one schools, uh, you know, you're you're on this high. And, you know, I was top 20 and I was All-American. All and I, I came to my visit kind of nonchalant. And uh, Coach Stringer is just like, hey, like, I can take my scholarship back. <laughs> like, you can, it's okay. Like, if you want to be, like, you're so cool. You're so cool. And I'm like, <laughs> whoa. Like, <laughs> it just completely shocked me. But I think that moment I, is something I would never forget because I was truly humble and I, you, you know that you can, you feel like you have everything and that the drop of a head, it can be gone. So I think that her instilling just such a humble, um, humbleness to me uh, was very important. So I think that's just a story from Coach Stringer in my recruit process that I would just never forget. What did she teach you about life away from basketball? She just taught me that, um, Nothing, like I told you before, nothing will ever be given to you. And if it's something that you really and truly want, that you have to take it. Um, I think that outside of basketball, you know, people want to do so many things. And it's so easy to just quit when things get tough, uh, when life when life hits you hard. And, you know, just hearing the, the things and the obstacles that Coach Stringer has overcome. Um, you know, we, we saw her come to practice every single day dealing with her um dealing with her, her mother's death and it was it was so hard to see but she brought the same intensity and the same fire every single day so um to just see her handle adversity and to still try to give us everything that she possibly could um was just one of the major lessons that I learned is just to continue to push through life and uh, if you want something to just go take it before I let you go summarize the legacy she leaves behind Uh, that's that's a tough that's a tough sum summarization. I think that 
Coach Stinger has broken so many barriers for um, just women of color in this game. And I think that she's inspired so many coaches. You know, you see Dawn Staley, um, Carolyn Peck, and so many other um, trailblazing coaches, coaches just wanting to follow in her footsteps. So I think that Coach Stinger just broke so many, so many barriers and really just paved the way um, for that next generation of coaches. And I think that she's also poured into young women much more than um, wins and losses. I just think that her um, really teaching us the, the way of life and teaching us um, how to go through it, how to navigate through it and to be successful um, off the court was very important to her legacy. But I just want to say thank you to Coach Stringer for everything that she's done for me. Um, she's inspired me to um, want to coach and want to be that um, mentor or that coach that someone talks about, like I talk about her, I want to be able to pour into young women in the next generation so that they feel the same. Well, I bet you'll be a great coach, but first you've got a title to defend in the WNBA, so. I do, I do. <laughs> Kalia Copper, one of the many greats to come from C. Vivian Stringer. Thanks for giving us some of your time. You're joining us from Spain, so I know it was out of your way to do this. We really appreciate it. No problem, thanks for having me. So, what is it like to throw a perfect game? We ask Ryan Ramsey that next, including what did he keep from that game? And did his teammates do what they often do in those spots and totally ignore him?